The next thing we're going to talk about now is actually going to be the loop function. The loop function is really, really useful when you're going to be practicing or about to compose something. Sometimes you work on the fly and you start with like a piano groove or a drum groove or something like that and you only have a couple of bars of it, but that's really all you need to get the general idea. Uh, other times you're going to need to listen to it for an artist to practice to before they're about to come in and they'll sit there and play it over and over and over until they get the right idea and then go for it. So this is how we actually utilize the loop. Now on the transport, we can just simply highlight it just by clicking right on the cycle key right here in a little highlight uh, purple. And you can do that up in your uh, header up on top as well. The hot key for that is the actual slash right next to the asterisk that you use to record. So just to the left of the asterisk, you're going to find that key for the loop. Now what that actually does, if there is no loop selected, no area above here selected in blue, it doesn't do anything. It'll just continue to play forever and ever and ever. So what we have to have is we have to have a section that we can loop. Now we can do this several different ways. The first way and the simplest way, depending on what you're trying to do, if you selected a region and hit the P key, it automatically sets the left locator and the right locator perfectly around the actual region that you selected. So if we selected this region, hit P, it jumps to that one. And we'll go ahead and demonstrate how it starts right from the beginning with the loop on. And it just cycles right over. It does not matter where you start if you started from the middle of it. When it gets to the end, it's just going to go right there. Now this is a very useful function for several things, but what we can do now is if we highlight it by just dragging in a blank area, clicking and holding and dragging over two objects, they'll both be selected. So if you hit P then, then it's going to cycle over all of it. And instead of just repeating that region, it's going to jump back to the beginning of this region. Now that is a very, very useful function. You can sit there and play that over and over and over until you get your part you need. But then when you start to record, you're going to need a, a kind of a different approach. And what I mean by that is what we're going to do is we're going to actually set the locators manually. Now again, for everything that you can do, you can always move things like using the handle um, by grabbing the whole thing. And this is just by moving your mouse right over the top of the ruler area here. And once it becomes a hand, you can click and drag it to different areas. Now this is actually not going to be very useful for us uh, in this particular example, but you still can use it if you ever found a, a need for it. Like if you want to just go over that area and it's already the perfect length, you can just do that. Uh, I just find it really, really easy just in case, uh, you know, looper is over there. I would just select the region I need, hit P and boom, it's right there. Okay, now one of the things that you're going to want to do, not just, you know, as I showed you in a previous tutorial, how to jump back and forth between bars just by using the arrow keys. Sometimes you're, you know, in the middle of the section, you want to just jump right to the beginning of this area. Instead of going right to the, uh, instead of going to the beginning of the song and then having to wait four bars to get right up to it, sometimes you just want to jump right to it. And the way to do that is hit the number one on the numbers pad and it jumps right to the beginning of that section. Number two on the numbers pad jumps right to the end of the second locator. So you have your left locator and your right locator, and very simply you just use the one and the two to jump to that. It does not matter how long it is. Obviously, if both of these are selected, and you can see that the left locator is on bar two, right locator is on bar six, it'll, the uh, number one will jump to bar two, and then it'll jump to uh, bar six for uh, the number two key. Uh, now, how do we set these things manually? I'm actually going to move this a little bit farther in time. And let's just say that we wanted to record on bar three, okay? And the objective is, uh, you know, the guitar player is going to start recording at bar three. Only problem is if we started it right at bar three, what's going to happen? He's going to be kind of all over the place. You're going to say, okay, ready? One, two, three, record. And he's just going to, he's going to miss it. There's no way he can come start recording perfectly right on that. The chances of that are one in a million. So we don't need to take that chance. He just needs a little bit of uh, lead time. So the way we can set that up is we can manually click right there on bar two, and then we can hit the uh, play key or the record key and get ready to record, and then he starts playing, okay? And that's fine, but then you always gotta keep constantly clicking over there. And I'm all about hotkeys. So the, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a locator just to go to that. Now how we can do that very, very easily is we just hit exactly where we want with the arrows, or you could click where you want it. It doesn't really matter. Whatever's faster. Obviously, if I want, if it was on 11 and I want to go to 2, 
just clicking on two would be much faster if you know instead of just clicking a hundred times there so you're gonna figure out what is actually gonna be faster but realistically for me to grab the mouse if I want to go to four I guarantee I could beat somebody by just going like that and I'm there if I had to grab the mouse and then manually come over there that's already taken me longer okay so again get used to all the hotkeys in the, every way you can get there because you will find a million different ways to do it and you you'll feel the keyboard and you won't even have to look down at it you'll just know the buttons to do that and that's really useful so what we're gonna do now is show you how to set the left locator uh, manually so the easiest way to do it, I think, is just tab right over to it with the left arrow, and now it's exactly on bar two, and it'll give us exactly four counts. And all you do is hold down the control key on the PC and hit the number one in the numbers pad, okay? And be careful, it's not the alpha, uh, which means the, the, number, the numbers that are above Q and W and E and R, those, those numbers, those are actually going to be used for selecting your tools, as you can see up on top. So what you're going to have to do is use the numbers pad on the right side of your keyboard, on the big keyboard. If you've got a small keyboard or if you're using a laptop, this might be a little bit more of a challenge, and this is why you'd want to set up the keys manually. But for the most part, what you're going to want to do is just go over to wherever you want, hold down Control or Command on the Mac, and then just hit the number one, and that will set the left locator. Now again, if we set it right at bar three, like we were saying, we hit the record button, we'd have no time to come in. So if you're going to give that person a little bit of lead time, and he's going to come in and start recording right on the, uh, the, the verse here, which is green, we're going to tab right over to it, hold down command or control on the PC, hit the, or hit the uh, number one, and that sets the left locator. Now, why did we do this? Because when we push play, two, three, four, boom, that's when you start recording. Okay, now that's what you want. However, let's say he made a, ma a mistake and he wants to do it again, which is very common. Instead of doing that, which is two clicks, it might even be farther, what you can do is just hit the number one, just all by itself. So instead of hitting control or command one, you're just jumping to it by just hitting the number one right on the numbers pad. And again, just like I showed you, number one and number two just jump to the end, to the left and the right locators. Okay, so let's just say uh, I'm going to go ahead and create... Uh, an audio track just for giggles and we'll just record blank data but what we're going to be doing when you see this is you're going to see what happens when we record and how fast you can do it so we'll just record person is basically just recording da -da 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 -da. oh they made a mistake you delete it jump back to it and without any seconds hesitation you just ready to record again now this is going to be very this is very important for a lot of people because again the edits just jumping back delete it hit the button hit record and that is just, that is something that you're going to get used to uh, working with artists that are perfectionists. Some people just don't care and they're just like, no, I got it. You know, they'll just, they'll just wing it. But if you're like me and you're a perfectionist, you want to make sure that uh, you get the best take possible because you know that recordings are immortal. Even if they're demos, when they let released on the street, that nobody will ever forget what the first time they've heard it and they will judge it by that. So I always make sure even my demo work is almost the finished product. So again, if we want to go over to the beginning of the course, which is this blue section, I wouldn't want to set it at bar five. That wouldn't make any sense, would it? So we'd want to jump back one bar to bar four, set the left locator there, and when I hit record, it's got four counts, and he starts playing over the chorus. And that's as simple as that. So that's how you actually set your left and right locators. You use the control on the PC just by tabbing to it, hitting number one, Go over number, uh, go to the area do you want to the right, hit control, and then hit number two. And that's how you set your keys, num uh, your locators manually. Now again, let's recap. We can hit the P once we've selected the regions that we want, and it will manually put them around there, and you can obviously jump to it. Uh, and you can hit the, com uh, the control and command to set the left and right locators with the number one and number two. Think of number one is left and number two is right. And to jump to the locators is just simply one or two. And then the loop is just the slash key. All right, so we can get that to repeat. Now, one thing I will tell you about the loop, okay? You do not want to record with the loop set up, okay? Let's just say the loop is on and we're about to record 
here's what's going to happen. Typically, when somebody's done recording, they're going to record past it a little bit. Okay, they're going to blend off if they're sustaining a note on the guitar or if they're recording a long la 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 and it keeps going past into the chorus and they have another track to come over top of that. The point is, is you don't want to have the loop on while you're doing that unless you're doing vocal comps. We'll get into that later, but let me show you uh, exactly what would happen if you record with the loop on. So we're recording and he's supposed to sustain past this, but uh, it just cuts right over the top of the next take. Okay, so that's why you don't want to have the loop on when you're recording, typically while you're playback and practicing. And that's about it for looping.